Throughout the years that Formula 1 has been around, plenty of teams have entered the sport with the hopes of making it big in the highest form of racing. After all, competing in F1 is quite a costly affair, with new teams now having to shell out nearly $200 million just to join the other teams on the grid aside from any of the operational costs involved in running a racing team. Despite the obvious financial setback, time and again enterprising businessmen and corporations have taken their chances at setting up their own teams in the cutthroat competition that is F1. While teams like Ferrari, McLaren and Williams have a rich heritage in the sport after years of fierce championship fight, there have been others that have had a disastrous and rather unfortunate run in their short spell in F1. So let's dive right in and take a look at our top picks for the worst seven teams in the history of F1. The most recent entry on this list is the Hispania Racing or HRT F1 team. Having joined the grid under the promise of a cost cap, former F1 driver Adrian Campos in alliance with Meta Images set up the Campos Meta F1 team later renamed as HRT. However, limited funding meant that the HRT Cosworth car with a Dallara chassis did not undergo any pre-season testing, whereas drivers Bruno Senna and Karun Chandok got their first taste of the F110 car only at the 2010 Bahrain GP. The team's highest finish that season would be 14th amongst a few retirements. The following year, the team cut ties with Delara, opting to develop their own chassis. Noreen Carthy Chain, Vitantonio Uzzi, and Daniel Ricciardo were selected to drive the cars, but they failed to qualify in the first race due to their biggest rival, the 107% rule. The team did slightly better than the previous season with fewer retirements, but there was no sign of any improvement. In its next and final season, Pedro de la Rosa was partnered with Carthy Chain, but an uncompetitive car resulted in a DNQ for the drivers in the Australian GP once again, followed by a string of below average performances. The team was at last put up for sale at the end of 2012, but found no buyers. Founded in 1984 by Keith Wiggins, the Pacific Racing Team first started out in Formula Ford and found huge success in the series. They later moved on to a Formula 3000 with David Coulthard, Christian Fittipaldi, Alan McNish and Eddie Irvine, driving for the team in various seasons. Seeking to make his fortunes in F1, Wiggins decided to move into F1 for the 1993 season, but a recession and the failure to acquire Reynard's F1 car design forced him to debut Pacific Grand Prix racing only in 1994 with Bertrand Gachot and Paul Belmondo at the helm. The PR01 underwent no testing whatsoever, which became obvious when the car failed to qualify for most races and retired in the races that it did manage to qualify for. The subsequent year was no better for Pacific, but with 12 teams competing that season, the PR02 could at least participate in the races. The team would continue to struggle with a retirement, finishing 8th twice as a saving grace. Wiggins and the Pacific team decided to cut their losses and withdraw from Formula 1, returning once again to Formula 3000. Another racing enthusiast with a dream of running his own F1 team, 40 Course, was the brainchild of Guido Forti, who at the time was running a successful operation in the Italian Formula 3 and the Formula 3000 championships. With backing from Abilio Denise, father of Brazilian driver Pedro Denise, Guido Forti set out to build his F1 team. His first obstacle was building his own chassis, instead of buying one from Delara, as per the technical regulations that season. As expected, the FG01 was an utter mess in comparison with the other cars on track, either finishing seven laps down behind the race leader or not finishing at all. After significant funding was put towards development, the team slowly improved over the course of the season. However, the worst was yet to come as Pedro Denise made the move to Ligier, taking with him all of his sponsorship money. Even though the 40 team had the capability of eventually becoming competitive, their financial condition that season meant that the team stopped receiving engines from Cosworth. A failed deal with Shannon Racing plus the subsequent court case of the team's ownership spelt the end of 40's F1 stint. In the span of five decades, there have been quite a few Japanese entries in F1, but none with a strange record like that of Maki. With Howden Ganley driving the F101 which resembled a toy car, Maki was set to make their debut at the 1974 Monaco GP but were turned back by the organisers. Not losing hope yet, they went home to Japan to redesign the car and returned in time for the British Grand Prix with the new F101B, which sadly could still not qualify. The next weekend in Germany, Ganley had a serious accident that would dash any hopes the Marquis team had left for that season. Their 1975 campaign was even more peculiar, when David Walker who was supposed to drive for Marquis showed up at Belgium, whereas the team did not bother coming. The Marquis team finally showed up for the Dutch GP with Hiroshi Fushida at the wheel, but as luck would have it their engine broke down right before the race. True to their form, Marquis did not qualify for any of the remaining races. 
In their final effort in F1, Marky decided to race in only one event in 1976, which by no surprise they failed to qualify. Rising from the ashes of the ill-fated Scuderia Coloni team, Andrea Moda Formula did not fare any better than their predecessor. Team owner and shoe designer Andrea Sassetti bought the remnants of the Coloni F1 team but not their entry into the championship, forcing the team to sit out the South African GP and the Mexican GP2 because of an unprepared car. Drivers Alex Caffey and Enrico Battaglia were soon replaced by Roberto Moreno and Perry McCarthy and the Coloni C4B chassis replaced with the new S921. While Moreno failed to qualify, McCarthy will not even get to participate due to issues with his super license. In the meantime, former driver Battaglia returned with a $1 million sponsorship package, but the FIA rejected any further driver changes that season, much to Sassetti's frustrations. Things only seem to be getting worse for the team at Andrea Moda as they participated in only one race in 1992 at Monaco, in which they unsurprisingly retired. They also missed the French Grand Prix due to a blockade, while both sponsors and employees started to exit the team. Later that year, Sassetti would be arrested in the paddock for allegedly forging invoices, and the Shoemakers team ultimately got the boot from the FIA forever. Contrary to its name, the Life F1 team's brief campaign in the sport was dead and over even before the end of their first season. Ernesto Vita, an Italian businessman, brought the team to life in 1990, aided by former Ferrari engineer Franco Rocchi, who was responsible for developing Life's W12 engine. The team managed to build only a single engine and a single chassis, but sadly the L190 was the slowest car on the grid with its overweight body and an engine that could barely deliver 400 to 480 horsepower. Their driver Gary Brabham left the team after just two races when he could not qualify at either event. These results would continue for the rest of the year with their worst performance coming at Imola, where driver Bruno Giacomelli finished pre-qualifying with a time that was nearly six minutes more than the fastest lap. By the time of the Portuguese GP, the team decided to change to a Judd VH engine, but discovered in spectacular fashion that the engine cover did not fit as the cover flew open during the weekend session. All that was left to do for the Life F1 team was to graciously accept defeat and leave the sport for good. Unlike the other teams on this list, Mastercard Lola were not destined to fail from the very beginning. After all, team principal Eric Broadley had been thriving in the chassis business with customers like Honda, BMW, LaRousse, and so forth. So when it was time for Lola Cars to start their own venture into F1, the team decided to build their own engine and chassis to race in the 1998 championship with financial support from Mastercard. But late in 1996, Mastercard gave the team an ultimatum to compete in the 1997 season or else they would lose out on the sponsorship money. With no other option, the team got to work and hired drivers Vincenzo Suspiri and the infamous Riccardo Rosset, whereas the team's plan to build a V10 engine had to take a backseat due to the limited amount of time for development. At the 1997 season opener in Australia, the cars were about 11 to 13 seconds behind the other cars and did not qualify as per the 107% rule. Mastercard Lola's F1 journey ended before it could even begin as Broadly withdrew the team from the championship at the next race. A final honourable or rather dishonourable mention is the USF1 team that was announced to join the grid alongside new entrants HRT and Virgin Racing back in 2010. The team went bust before they could even begin work on the cars, paying money mostly in fines and court settlements to its creditors. Well, that's our take on the worst seven teams to have ever taken part in F1. Which team do you think might have made it under different circumstances? Let us know in the comments below and of course like, share and subscribe to Pitstop for more awesome F1 content.